Hi there, I'm John Leach, and you're watching Arc Fishing. Look at that crappie, man. That's a nice crappie. <laughs> nice largemouth. Very nice largemouth. Nice largemouth bass. Nice largemouth bass. All right, good deal. All right, I'm gonna reach this beautiful muskie. 35 inch muskie. Catch and release. Out there. All right, so here's the canoe I bought, just picked up from Bethlehem, PA. It's an hour drive. It's an hour drive there, an hour drive back. But I got a really good deal on this uh, canoe. It's a 15 foot. Um, it's made by um, Field and Stream, an old town. But here's the side view. I'm going on the back. It has a wooden transom so I can put both an electric motor and a gas powered motor on here. And I do have it registered for a motor, which is fantastic. So here's this side of it. I'm going to unload it shortly and I'll show you the inside, but just pick this up. It's the old registration on it. Um, I'll have to get the proper strap. Actually, I actually had the proper straps in the back. The guy gave me a whole bunch of accessories with it. I got He gave me seats, straps, light vests, oars, everything. The wheels. I mean, the only thing I got to do is put a battery and a, and a fish finder. It's good to go. I mean, I can take it out right now if I wanted to, but it's too cold. It's freezing out here. But it just needs a good clean, and I can put it in the water. It's ready to go. Um, really good shape. It's a 2008 model. So there it is, top of my truck. I'm going to take it off, and I'll show you the inside and all the accessories that came with it. So stay tuned. All right, I just got off the truck. Here's the back. There's the transom. Um, the wood's been replaced. That's newer wood, the original wood brought off. So the guy bought off, replaced the wood. But he put really nice wood on it. And there's the inside. And then I'm gonna go around the side. I'm actually go on the inside here. Here's the rear seat. What's really cool is it has this compartment right here. So I can put tackle and all kinds of stuff in here. Food, drinks, it's got this dry storage. Let me open that up. That's supposed to be waterproof. So, I put stuff in here that'll stay dry, like my phone. But, uh, things in really good shape for a 2008. Um, there's a sign saying it's made by Field and Stream. Um, so there you go, there's the inside. Give it a tour. There's a little three cup holders and a little compartment there to throw the lures in. Uh, four pound, four person capacity, 765 pounds. Put the four horsepower outboard motor on here. That's pretty cool. I'm mainly gonna use an electric motor, but down the road I may put a outboard on here. So check out these accessories that came with. Um, came with this wheel thing. Came with life vest, the seats, everything in the back of my truck, and all these straps, foam pads, the oars. So I have to get anything out and organize it. But it came with a whole bunch of accessories. All right, so here's all the accessories you gave me. Here's the two seats. See, these are extra. These are two folding seats with pads on there's one there's two that match the canoe um, he gave me two life jackets and you good cleaning and then over here is the oars he gave me two oars that are in good shape they came with it um, and then over here is a bunch of brand new straps that are never used um, foam carrier for on the roof and here's the wheel cart there's a strap that goes to the wheel cart and that's the wheel cart so I can wheel it down into from the river the lake the pond and what's cool is you even if I take it long distances, I can put this, that on top of the canoe and take it with me on a float trip down the river and use it to go back up the bank again. So all these accessories came with it, man. It was a good deal. Uh, came with the title, too. So it's, it's titled in my name and registered in my name, which is fantastic. Um, got a really good deal. I bought off of Craigslist on craigslist.org. Um, so I'll be using that a lot this year, especially since I'm going to be restoring my bass boat. So there it is, all the accessories that go to that 15 foot canoe.
Here's what we are used to look like. See how it's rusty, dirty, corroded. Look at that. It's not a long way to go, but what a difference. Steel water and Clorox wipes. But what's the difference of those two? Big difference. Fluffing compound I'm using. It's made by 3M. It's Super Duty Rubbing Compound. And it's thirty dollars a bottle. The stuff isn't cheap, but it works. So I'm hoping to smooth this out and make it nice and shiny and smooth again. Okay, the actual length of this canoe is 14 and a half foot. The title says 15. Technically, it's title as a 15 footer. For those who don't know that. Any type of watercraft, uh, if it's under six inches, shop, it goes, to, it, they round it off. So in other words, if this was 14.4 foot, they call it 14 footer. But since it's 14.6, they round it off to 15 foot. So it's considered a 15 foot canoe. It's 14 feet 7 inches, 14 foot 8 inches. It rounds off to 15 foot. So it's titled as a 15 footer. But technically, it's 14 feet 6 inches long. Tomorrow, showers likely high 63, a chance of showers tomorrow evening as well, low 54. Monday, a slight chance of storms, high 75. This report is brought to you by J.C. Penny. This Mother's Day, shop one gift for mom and one gift like for you at J.C. Penny. Like up to five. A chocolate king size shake. Two all new water attractions open Memorial Day weekend. Save on tickets at HersheyPark.com. Hey, it's Why Would I Choose AJ, and guess what? I am still playing this addictive puzzle game, Best Fiends, on my phone. Now, not only am I obsessed. But everybody, family and friends, they're completely obsessed too. I've just passed level 157, and trust me, you don't want to miss out on this game. So join the 85 million people.
was Shawn Mendes, the sky announced his world tour this week. No dates near us yet. I don't see a Philadelphia or, you know, an Allentown or a Hershey Park in there, but that could change. It's in my blood on Y102. Mm -hmm. Fluffing compound. Oh, oh man. Sometimes I feel You're kidding me. Paperwork, original owner's manual. Original Killing Stream oars. This uh, canoe is a 2008. I got all the original equipment, all the original paperwork with it. It's amazing. Check this cool feature out my Chola motor. This has a this is a Minn Kota Endura Max. It's it's 12 volt, 40 pound thrust. But check this out, the battery indicator. Battery is fully charged. See that? The touch of a button. That is so cool. It has this handle that extends. I have forward, and then I turn off. I reverse. Cable going. I want to figure out how I want to do this. I might extend that cable. And I have the battery over here. I'm gonna to have to strap the battery down, but just setting up an idea how I want to rig this canoe. So let's do a walk around. So here's the back. And I could put a motorized outboard in there too if I wanted to, but I'll probably just do electric. So.
this is, I cleaned it up, and I cleaned some more, but this is the wheel cart. You put it underneath the canoe, it goes around the back, and you tie the front so I can wheel it anywhere. What's really cool, I have a kickstand on here. So there's the kickstand down, it, oh, pretty cool. Alright, here's a quick update. Um, obviously, I sanded um, the canoe and then I buffed it. So, I started out with a 50 crit to sand out the scourges and scratches. Then I went to 200 or 220, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 220. Then I went to 1000 grit and then I buffed it um, using 3000 RPM with a buff, wool buffing pad and a 3M uh, cutting compound. So, then after that, I took some of this stuff right here, which is called Armor All Ultra Shine Protect It. Put that on the side. So here we go around. You can see how nice it turned out. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but for now, big difference. Big difference. There's that side. You go to the other side. Okay, here's the other side. I got to get that out of there. It's from the buffing compound. That's why it's white. That's not supposed to be white, but I'll fix that later. But these scratches here, I couldn't get out. They were so heavy and so gouged in there. I don't know. I might have to put a sticker on it. But that's... Actually, I bought a used. So there ain't much I could do about that. I don't know. I could try sanding again above and just put a sticker over it. But that's the only part of the canoe that looks rough. Right here. But then after that, it gets real nice and smooth again. So, there's an update. Alright, welcome to another edition of Arc Fishing. This is going to be another episode of me restoring a 15-foot Old Town canoe. So... I want to do some modifications to it tonight. One thing I definitely want to do is I want to install the new fish finder I bought. Um, all the parts I ordered for it came in. It's just a matter of install them. I ordered uh, the rear navigation light, the front navigation lights. I ordered one of the two rod holders that came in. I got a brand new fish finder for it. Um, I'm trying to think what else. A whistle. The lights that go around the inside to light up for nighttime. That they're green LED lights. So everything came in. The only thing I didn't order yet was the other rod holder, but I'll get that you know this payday or next payday. But other than that, everything ready to go. It's just my install it. So stay tuned for more. Let's open that garage door and get some air flowing in here. Turn this fan on. Check that out. Brand new Lowrance. It's called a Hook 25X. Has GPS split shot HDI. It has GPS and it has down scan imaging, down structure scan. So. I have yet to open this. I just bought this last week at Cabela's. So, let's see what it looks like. So far, I'm liking what I see. Ooh, that's nice and new. Check that out. Brand new Lowrance. Backside. All right, let's put this down here. Gotta figure out where and how I'm gonna install this. There should be a transducer down in here somewhere. Ooh, lots of hardware. There's the mount for the transducer. That's or that mount for the no that's right, that might that's the mount for the GPS unit. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. That's the mount for the head unit. So we'll have to figure out. I'm thinking about mounting it right here. Is what I'm thinking, but we'll see. There's the transducer. Ooh, look at that. That's a nice transducer too. Nice and long. Alright, let's see what's all in here. Hardware for the transducer. What is this? Uh an electrical unit for the head unit. What the heck is this for? Extra wire? I don't know. It's not the instructions. I'm curious to know what that's for. Oh, I tell you.
warning information, and his part number information. Interesting. So let's start with the head unit. I'm going to figure out where and how I'm going to mount that. Hmm. So refreshing. Oh man. I love ice cold water. Alright, so here's the other part I ordered. It's called the switch panel. And check this out. It's got six switches on it and they all light up green. I don't know if I'm gonna install the uh, or hook the fish finder this or I might run the fish finder right to the battery. Oops, I'm gonna lose another part. This thing's a mess right now. I think we've got another piece. I'm surprised. No. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five. Yep, okay, so check this out. We've got six switches to light. So it's not hooked up, obviously, but once it's hooked up, I push that button, out of light green. Then I have a voltage regulator, it tells me how many volts. Batteries. I have two USB ports so I can charge all my camera batteries. And then there's a cigarette lighter adapter. This thing was 46 bucks, but I'll tell you what, I think it's going to be worth it. I just got to figure out where and how I'm going to install it. I thought about putting it there. I don't know yet. I got to figure that out. Where in the world I'm going to install that? I could, you know what? I don't know where I'm going to install this. I really want the fish finder there. I could have went, nah, so I really have the fish finder there. I don't know where I'm going to install this yet. But i got to figure something out. I'll worry about that later. My main goal right now is to get the fish finder hooked up because to me that's more important than this. I can wait. wiring job, but as long as it's functional, hopefully waterproof. That's the main thing. I don't want water getting in there. That's my main concern. It's probably good I put a fuse on this one, as much as it sucks. Pull the fuse. Alright, there we go. That's done. Now i got to install the transducer. That's going to be the next fun part. Let's see if this thing even powers up. Let's do something. Just out of curiosity. That's negative, this is positive. I want to see if I'll just power up. I thought that one's always positive. All right, let's see if this thing powers on. Here we go. Test run. Will it power on? I'm gonna have to hold the button in. Back them. All right, what's going on here? Box unplugged. Well, this ain't cool. What the fuse is blowing already. Maybe I don't have it installed properly. All right, stay tuned. Something's not right. Camera. All right, round two. Let's see if this baby powers up. Come on, baby, power up. Hold it in or something? Wow, come on now. What the heck's going on here? I know that's yeah, that's in right. That's negative. Why is this thing powering up? What the heck's going on here? I 
seriously doubt you have to have the transducer for the power on. That wouldn't make any sense. Alright, something's still not right. What the heck's going on here? I'm starting to get a little irritated now. I think this is unbelievable, okay? This entire book's, it's, it's, every page is a different foreign language. But here's what's really messed up. The pages in English, it shows us one section in English, and then to the right of it's in a foreign language. Look at this. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if you can see that. But right here, you'll see English words, and over here it's all foreign language. That should be English, and it's not. They totally screwed this up. This is a manufactured defect. Number one, instructions don't are useless. I can't read that foreign language, okay? Next problem is, I know for a fact because it's hooked up right, but it won't power on, which tells me it's a defective unit. Which makes me very, very disappointed in Lawrence because I bought two Hummingbird Helix 5s on two separate occasions. I hooked them up and had them working very quickly, very easily. I have a single problem with them. They still work. I buy Lawrence, right out of the box it's defective. And instructions that are useless in a foreign language I can't read. I, I am frustrated. Well, I think I'm going to eliminate that fuse and see if that makes a difference. Which tells me that fuse thing is a piece of shit if it does work. I am so frustrated. We're going to try something. Here's, you know what, the more I think about it, this, this piece here is a fuse that came with it, just a fuse here. My key, my hummingbirds did not come with this. I remember hooking it right to the battery without any issues. I'm beginning to wonder if that's what the problem is. The fuse ain't blown, but it just doesn't seem right. If it don't power up now, it's definitely an effective unit. If it does power up, that means that, whole, that fuse piece is defective. Find out. It's all spark. Let's see if this powers up. <laughs> Look at that. This piece is junk. Useless. Don't install that piece if you get a rants. Do not rely on this product's primary source of navigation. The operator is responsible for using official government charts and prudent methods of safe navigation. The user assumes all liability for operations and associated risk. That's without the fuse being hooked up. How about that? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> well, that whole fuse system they have on this thing is useless. You hook it directly to the battery without the fuse, no problems. Hook the fuse up, it's defective. Well, now you know, if you get one of these Lorantz, ones like I got, don't waste your time with the fuse that comes with it. It's a waste of time. Alright, I'm going to hook the transducer up next, and I'm going to take this out tomorrow, and hopefully this thing works. It better impress me, because so far I'm not impressed with it. Alright. So this piece comes with the unit. The fuse you put in here. The fuse is not blown. I'm looking at it. It's not blown. But this does not work. It's defective. It's a total waste, if you ask me. But I'm going to put it in there so I don't lose it, just in case I have to return this. So this thing don't press me tomorrow. I might go back for a hummingbird. Don't power off. There we go. I do like the location of that. There's the transducer right here. It's a little bit of play in it. Uh, a hose clamp would make that a lot snugger, but I use two of these zip ties here. Like I said, this is temporary. This isn't permanent. I'm just trying to get everything set, situated to figure out how I really want it. If I decide to keep the unit, I still want to play around with it until I figure out permanent. I'll probably get the hose clamp down the road because the hose clamp works way better. As you take notice, it has a little bit of wiggle to see that a hose clamp would eliminate that wiggle shouldn't hurt it but this thing helps so i want to file these edges here next look at how chipped that is i'm going to file those and smooth that out all right let me use the box all that stuff came in Clean out canoe it's a mess but anyways here's the uh, this is what i'm going to install next this is the uh, rear navigation um, base mount 
Now I have a long 36 inch LED light pole to go over that. It's in the house. And I also bought a 36 inch stick on ruler made by Arapala. I'm gonna find a place to put that there so I can measure my fish. But I gotta clean this canoe out, it's a hot mess. Get on my nerves. Alright, so here's a brand new 36 inch Shoreline Marine LED light. So we're gonna, see. first of all, we're gonna make sure it fits. That out. LED light, that's cool. That should be real nice and bright. Yeah, baby. Check that out. That's fantastic. The wire that, the front one's on, I can fish at night. It's a shame I had the camera off. Pennsylvania Boat and, Boat and Fish Commission Officer I was actually checking out my canoe and could not compliment him. I said he liked it. He said it was a nice setup. I don't even have it, I only have about halfway done what I want to do to it, so that was pretty nice. He was real nice to me. He was talking to me for a little bit. And I was reminding him that Monday's Fisher Free Day and he thought it was Sunday. He said to double check. He <laughs> couldn't remember if it was Sunday or Monday. But I'm pretty sure it's Monday. It's Fish for Free Day. So this place is going to be packed on that day. I don't think I'm coming here. I'll probably go somewhere else. But he was real nice to me and checking out the canoe and giving me some good compliments on it. So that was pretty cool. That was nice of him. I don't know if you can see him in the background. There goes the white truck. I don't know if you can see him. I might be blocking your view, but that's the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission officer. Boat floats. Doesn't take on water. Seems to perform real nice. Control motors. Working great on this thing. I'm gonna put full, it's a full throttle. I'm doing 3.4 miles per hour. Plenty fast enough for a little 15 foot fiberglass canoe. So I think I could put up to a 5 6 horsepower mo outboard motor here too if I wanted to. And I might do that down the road. Then maybe mount the trolling motor right here, put the outboard in the back. Put an outboard in there, I'll probably get to do between like, I don't know. Between 8 and 15 miles per hour, depending on what I put on. Alright, here's another update on my canoe. Now, I'm not after looks on this, I'm just after functionality. But I made a switch panel box. I want to paint it green and then I want to screw that fast the seat so it's secure. But I'm going to take this out just to show you. But here's the switch panel. Um, that's the back side. But take notice. Oh, wait, almost dropped it. <laughs> that's not cool. Alright, hold on a second. So you take notice, it's got an amp gauge, it's got a signal adapter, it's got a 12 uh, a USB port. Actually, it's got two of them. It's got six switches. They all light up. Let me, um, hold on a second. So, there you go. So you see it has dual USB port, signal lighter adapter, amp gauge, and six lighted gauges. It's a really cool thing. So, I have all my electronics hooked to this. But see, there's, without it, I'm going to screw that fast. I'm going to drill a hole in the back so I can run all the wires out to the back so you can't see them. I'm going to hide them through my way. But this goes in here like this. I'm going to screw that fast. But there it is. Let's get in there. Like I said, I don't look professional. Boy. <laughs> it's not professional, but I'm not after professionalism. I'm just after functionality right now. I mean, maybe down the road I'll re make a new one and make it real nice professional, but right now I just want the function. That's my main objective right now. But there's another quick update on this canoe. And then uh, I'm going to draw... I drill. I'm gonna draw. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, that almost made sense. I'm gonna drill holes through here, run screws down in here so it, it's secured fast. Maybe even strap it. And then back here on the back side, I'm gonna put a bilge pump here and have the wires coming out. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that yet. But I wanna put a bilge pump back there. Back here, I'm gonna eventually put. Uh, these wires won't stay here. I'll just have them temporarily there. But I'm eventually wanna move the trolling up to the side over there. I'll put a gas tank here and put an outboard in the back. For this 15 foot old town canoe but i'm gonna do a lot of cool modifications to it but there's a quick update 
All right, here's another quick update. Now, everything's a mess it's because I've been doing a lot of tedious work, but I just installed these LED lights. This is the left side. I, I installed the left side last night, the right side tonight. I want to make sure it lights up, so I just really quick um, hooked it to the battery. Um, you can see all the wiring here, but i got all kinds of wiring going on, but I want to fix that. But I just want to give you a quick update. Uh-oh, I just tripped on the wire. All right, hold on, I'll be back. Okay, as I was saying before, I tripped on the wire and actually unplugged it by accident. Um, everything's a mess, but just ignore the mess. I'll get that cleaned up, and you'll see wires everywhere. Um, but this is another, many of the, one of the many modifications I'm going to do this canoe. I'm going to go up through here and turn the light out and see how cool it looks in the dark. But that's just the one side installed. Oh, check that out. That's cool. Now, I have one on the right side. I have it installed. It's got to run all the wiring. But, uh, dude, that looks so cool. Oh, I can't wait. It's getting there. And then I have the LEDs on the side here hooked up. I don't have, you can see right here where my finger's at, that's the red side. The other side's green. That's the navigation light. I got a, I ran the wire here. I just got to hook everything up yet. But, if you take notice, I'm going to hook it up so I can either run one LED green side or both. So I'm going to hook to two separate switches. So I can choose to have it have one side on or the other side, or I can have both sides on, depending on how bright I want it. But it's getting there. I got a lot of modifications I'm doing to this canoe and I want to do to it. But it's gonna be a real sweet setup when I'm done with this. But this thing's looking awesome, man. But you can see all the wiring I got in the canoe. Um, it's a hot mess right now, but it'll be real nice once done. I can't wait. Cannot wait. It's getting there. That, that is cool, though. Okay, I'm going to do a voiceover here real quick. Um, this is a trailer I bought up at Siemens Marines up near Lake Wool and Pole Pack. Um, it's a two-hour drive for me to go there and a two-hour drive back, but this place is called Siemens Marine, and they're literally 15 minutes from Lake Wool Pole Pack in the Pilgrim Mountains in Pennsylvania. But I bought this trailer specifically for the canoe so I could chill around because it's too heavy to load on and off the roof of my truck. Alright, so here's another update. I got the navigation lights all hooked up around all the wires. It's pretty much ready to go. There's the front. There's the green side. There's the red side. Let me back up see if you can see it better. There you go. Now you can see both of them. There's both of them. And then back there's the rear. LED navigation light so there's the rear one all right so there's another update I'm gonna hook up the, LED, the side LED lights next so stay tuned for more all right here's another video update just ignore the fireworks I'm I live by a three blocks from a baseball stadium and they're setting fireworks off so you hear that in the background but at any rate here is the front navigation lights inside LED lights and then the rear LED navigation light so everything's hooked up and installed, ready to go. I just got to do a few minor details, but just do a walk by here so you can see how. Now, just ignore the wiring mess because everything's just temporary. So there's the rear navigation LED light. I have the American flag attached to it. And then you can see my wiring nightmare down there. That's not going to stay like that. I will fix that and make that look professional. That's just temporary. But I'll give you a good laugh at any rate. So then... Here's the inside LED light so I can fish at nighttime. Go back towards the front. I'll have those hooked on two separate switches. Right now I have everything hooked together. And then here's the red side front LED navigation light. And there's the green side front LED navigation light. And then back out here you can see both of them. I don't know if I get the right angle. There we go. And there's both, both the front LED navigation lights. And then back up. And there's everything combined. I have everything running on all one circuit right now. I'm going to change that. I just have it temporary to make sure everything's working. But I'm going to let me go in here and show you something real quick. I'm going to do a professional on everything into this control panel right here. That, that control panel is going to light up too. So what I'll do is when I flick this switch on, that switch will light up green to tell me it's on. I turn it off. I'll turn it off. So I'll have everything hooked up and done. But this, just want to show you a progress, give you another quick update. So it's getting there. All right, here's another quick update. You got all the wires ran up, ready to go. All I need to do is get a few more clips, but it's so close to being finalized. So here's another quick update. So I have all the navigation lights hooked up, the LED lights. 
the control panel, the bilge pump, um, fish finder, everything, transducer. So here's the front LED lights, navigation lights. So those are hooked up, all ready to go. Then you'll take notice inside, have the front LED lights hooked up and ready to go. That's for night fishing or early, early or late, late evening. And then you'll take notice, I had the control box all set up and ready to go. I'll show you more on that in a minute. And over here I had the fish finder now. I don't have it, obviously it's not showing any fish because I don't have it in the garage or in the water. But uh, I have it at the ranch there. I forget what model it is off the top of my head, but it's a brand new fish finder. I just bought that like a month ago. And then uh, here's the rear um, LED navigation light. And then here's the, here's what's really cool. So let me turn these lights off. You take notice. Let me turn all these off. So it's telling me I have 12.5 amps for voltage, I should say. And uh, so the green lights at the bottom tell me I got juice going to the switches. So that's just telling me whether I got juice or not. So the very first switch over here is my navigation lights. I turn that on. Take notice the lights up. Now all my navigation lights work. This switch is one side of the uh, LED lights. So that's going to be the starboard side and then this side is going to be the port side that lights up and there you go so I have there you go so I could have either I watch this this is pretty cool I can have either one side on both sides on or I can choose which side I want on so I can have that side or that side both or none so it's pretty cool and then I got this last switch is for the bilge pump right here I just got hooked the hose to back here's the bilge pump now listen so I'm just going to run a hose from here up the side, get the components, and I have to run a thing out of here so I can build the water out of here. But there's a real quick update. I'm going to go around it again one more time, and then uh, uh, I'll just run it with music so I can stop talking. But oh, the other thing is, here's a handle I made. This handles off a battery, and I put brand new rope on it, and I, I bought a carbine clip for this but the one I got was too small I need a bigger one so I gotta go back take the carbine clip back and get a bigger one but that's gonna be my handle instead of using this stupid thing which is a pinion end I'll have this which is way better one more thing I've got to mention it has a dual USB port so check that out even lights up so I can charge my GoPro batteries and then over here and close this and then over here cigarette lighter adapter so I can plug like a spotlight or something if I wanted to um, but that's another cool feature too so I had a box here and I screwed the box into the seat so it stays secure so it don't go loose um, I was gonna strap it but it seemed like screwing it fast like that just works so much better so I'm real close I strapped the battery down to take notice there I strapped it um, I still need I got I ran out of clips of course I went to Lowe's get clips and they're sold out the contractors keep buying them all I think um, but I need more clips of this wiring. You take notice that side's done and looks professional compared to this side. This side's very mature because I'm not done with it. I gotta get the clips yet. I ran out of clips. And then I got the wiring nightmare almost finished back here. I just gotta do a few more things and I'll put all that stuff inside this tubing right here so it'll look right like that. See how professional it is? You, you can't tell, but I got a whole bunch of wires running through there. I think I got four going through there for now. I'll probably run probably two more through there yet. I eventually want to put a live well in here and hook that up to switch. So right now there's four wires going through here. I'll eventually have six or more wires going through there. And that looks so much more professional. So all these loose wires like that, that looks very unprofessional. So let's get in there. That's real, real close to where I want it. Real close. All right, so check this out. This is what it looks like at nighttime. So I came back out. It's real dark. I turned the lights off. So there's the rear navigation light on. The inside LED lights. I have the fish finder on. Go to the front, and you'll take notice I have port side LED navigation light in the front, and the starboard side LED green light on the uh, starboard side. But here's a that is bright, man. I'm loving it. Oh, and here's the the um, battery, and here's the junction box. Check that out. There's my switch panel. So the first one, only to, if you're saying what I'm saying, the one to the left is for the navigation lights. The second one's for the starboard side green LED lights. And then the next one, the third one is for the port side LED lights. So I can choose to have either side on or both on. 
which is really cool. And then the uh, fish finder's mounted there, ready to go. Obviously, it's not working; it's not in water, but I mean, it works. It's just not not gonna find any fish in the cement. <laughs> but uh, this is awesome, man. I'm loving it. It's getting there. It's so close to where I want it. The wiring's getting to. I mean, it's still a mess, but I will have that fixed and I'll have that looking professional, just like that right there. You take notice that side you can't see any of the wiring and that's exactly what i wanted i have all that wiring taped up secured and hidden with uh, screws fasteners and tape you can't see it so this side you can see the loose wire see the loose wire there i ran out of clips and of course i went to lowe's to buy more and they're all out of them they're sold out of them so i gotta get more and then i'll hide that wiring and you'll never see that wiring and then see how that's a nice professional right there i'm gonna do that back here then i'm gonna make that wire look professional so as the seat goes there, here's my horn. But I gotta hit fish out my horn button too. I got a horn. Um, here's my dry box. There's a container compartment underneath that fish finder right there. Up here's the front seat, and up here's the horn. I'm out of the horn underneath the. F <laughs> so I'm gonna scare the heck out of my passenger. That's gonna be hilarious. But uh, I got the battery strapped down. It's getting real close to being fully modified. It's gonna be a sweet setup once it's done. I can't wait. Uh-oh. That was a big raindrop. It's time to go. We're done. We're done. Shit. Looks like I'm getting wet. Hoping not to get wet, but it looks like I'm getting wet. I'm about ready to smash that freaking fish finder anyways. I'm so freaking fed up with this freaking piece of shit in my hands. There you go, I'll save you a lot of energy. <laughs> we should have left a little sooner, that rain's coming down. Wait, don't lean over that too far towards Josh. This one's pretty good. Yeah, it does. I'm on my, if I'm on here by myself, it does five miles per hour. And that's all electric, no, no outboard. Right now we're doing 3.2 miles per hour. Yeah, a few small ones. Large mouth. Spinners and worms. You need a radio on here. I'm surprised you don't have one. <laughs> I'll be next year. Got all the other gadgets on here. I'll have an equalizer, a subwoofer, and a... I thought that's what that big box was. No, that's for like. Hey, I want to see what this is for. For night fishing. <laughs> is it just, is it just for the lights? Yeah. Well, navigation lights. You watch. See that light? Oh, okay. The pole. And then you have the inner lights like these two. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Boom box is coming next year. <laughs>